Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Izuku has an evolved version of One for All, Deku X Momo, Part 1. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Ultimate Dankness 112, link is in the description, also subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's begin the video. Eldera Junior High. So, as third year students, it's time to think seriously about your future and what you want to do with your lives the blonde haired teacher addressed a class full of quirky students. I could pass out some career aptitude test, but why bother? He grabbed the test papers and threw them in the air. I know you all want to go to the hero track. This whole class was in an uproar, and the students started to show off their quirks. Yes, yes you've got some very impressive quirks, but no quirk usage in school, so get a hold of yourself. Hey teach, don't lump me in with this group of losers. A boy with sand hair spoke up after staying silent most of the class. I'm the real deal, these rejects will be lucky to be sidekicks of some busted D-lister the boy bragged. At this the whole class turned against him. Hey. You think you're better than us Katsuki, huh? Stop bragging Katsuki. Let's go, I'll take you all on. The teacher soon silenced the class and started reading Katsuki's result. Huh, you've got pretty impressive marks, maybe you will get into UA. He is aiming for the national. That school has a 0.2 acceptance rate. It's impossible to get into. And that is exactly why it's the only school worthy of me. Jumping onto the desk, Kitsuki began another bragging session. I am going to be the number one hero, even greater than All Might himself. I'll be the richest, most famous hero the world has ever seen, and it all starts with UA High. Oh yeah, Yagi, don't you want to go to UA too? All eyes turned on the name Dezuku Yagi, and then complete silence, until. Yagi, there's no way you can get into the hero course without a quirk. But I have a quirk Izuku tried and failed to defend himself. But quirk, the quirk that makes your body feel warm, yeah we know it's just a lie. You're quirkless. No, it's my quirk I'm not. Deku. Boom. Listen up Deku, you're even worse than these rejects, you quirkless wannab. Alright calm down everyone, and Bakugu go back to your place, you know it's not permitted to use your quirk in school. Fine. After school. Man that fight from the morning is all over the news, better write some notes on it. Deku. Not this again. Hey Kakin. I don't know what your game is Deku, but if you want to live, I suggest that you dump your dream down the gutter. I'm so sick of this. Huh and what is this? The bully picked up Izuku's hero analysis copy number 13, exploded it and threw it outside, despite Izuku's protest. And if you don't I'm gonna fucking kill you. How many more days like this, why can't they just leave me alone? Mom and dad are always busy with their work in Tokyo, they're going to visit me tomorrow after a long time. I will have to get some food supplies. They used to visit me more often, but ever since dad's car accident, I feel like they are avoiding me. I'm skipped to under the bridge. No matter, I won't give up, I have to prove to my parents that I can become a hero just like All Might. All I have to do is work hard, harder than everyone else, I just have to find a way to make my quirk work, if it even is a huh what is that? Just then a greenish black mass started to emerge from a manhole under the bridge. Ha! The perfect human camouflage. The villain. I need to run Izuku began to hightail it, but was pounced on by the villain. Not so fast, I'm only trying to take over your body, it'll all be over soon. Izuku tried to claw at the villain to get him away, but in vain. I'm made of liquid, boy, no amount of struggling will help you. All I have to do is get away from him. My body is getting weak. I think I'm dying. Please help. Texas smash. And then everything went black. Are you alright young man Izuku? Thank god I reached in time, but what is he doing in this part of town, should I need to check if he is okay, I should probably sign this too hey, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, thought we lost you there. How all might. Izuku said, half screaming. Normally I don't let civilians get in the way of my justicing, but turns out the sewer system in the city is very confusing. Be so cool Izuku thought with dazed eyes. And before you ask, I already signed your notebook. Thank you very much. I think that I should get going and have to get this villain to the authorities. All Might said as he showed the bottle with the villain inside to Izuku. Wait please before you go, I just need to ask you something. No, please don't. Ever since I was a three-year-old, I always wanted to become a hero, my classmates think that I can never be one without any superpowers, but I want to help people, I want to help society, I want to save everyone I can with a fearless smile, I want to proudly say I am here while fighting against villains. So I just want to ask you this. I know what it's going to be. Do you think that I can become a hero without a quirk? There may have been complete silence, but there was a war going on inside All Might's mind. A war between All Might, the greatest hero till date and Tashinori Yagi, father of a quirkless child. 
Amitashinori, say yes, he's your son. Say that he can become a hero. Give him one for all, train him to be the next symbol of peace. Young man. No I cannot let my personal feelings get in the way of my judgment. I'm sorry to say this. Please forgive me my son. But you can't be a hero without a quirk. The last bit of hope that Izuku had was gone. Although he didn't want to believe it, the truth was that all this time, Izuku was holding on to a fantasy. All this time he had been running away from reality, but now reality had hit him like a freight train. You have a commendable dream young man, but pros always risk their lives, often getting fatally wounded, even if they have a quirk. I. So, no, I don't think that you can become a pro hero without a quirk. I understand what Izuku said while looking at the ground. If you really want to help people, you can always become a doctor or police officer. When All Might turned around, he saw the amount of sadness Izuku's eyes held, even though there were no tears. I don't think I can look him in the eyes anymore, if only I could fix this somehow. All Might felt sudden weakness throughout his entire body. Should almost out of time, need to leave fast. I guess I should go, more justice is to be served. All Might, away. And with that All Might shot off into the sky. Myself and your mother love you very Izuku, much I hope you understand why I said those words today. All Might in deep thought didn't notice the bottle fall of his pocket. Also being a hero I cannot let any civilian be in any danger. A hero might have won today, but a father lost. Time skipped to the market incident. Izuku arrived at the marketplace only to see the same sludge villain rampaging around the market. Isn't that the villain that All Might was chasing earlier? What the hell, why aren't the pros doing anything? They can't, the villains got a hostage. That's the same villain that attacked me under the bridge. Izuku then caught the sight of a little sand blonde hair and put two and two together. Oh no, the explosions, the hair it's kakin. Ah dumb. Why am I so useless? Ah dumb. No, I need to help him. Ah dumb. Why am I feeling warm? Be a dumb. I need to save Kaka. Detroit smash. The air pressure of the smash was so strong that it changed the weather to rainy. After that Bakugou got praised by the pros for having such a powerful quirk. Well time to head home. Oh wait, I still need the supplies. Young Bakugou has a powerful quirk and strong determination. With the right amount of training he could be unstoppable. Maybe he can carry on the torch. But Bakugou. Ha. I've already been praised by the other pro and Evan Almighty himself, there's nothing that could stop me from being number one. Bakugou a thin, frail looking man with messy blonde called out to him. Oh, hey Mr. Yagi didn't know you were in town. Bakugou liked Mr. and Mrs. Yagi very much, sometimes more than his real parents. He would have stated how Izuku didn't deserve parents like them. Bakugou, I need to discuss something very serious with you. Fucking Deku, he definitely told his parents this time. He's gonna fucking get it tomorrow. Okay. What I'm going to tell you is top secret. Bakugou just nodded. I am. All of a sudden S body started to steam, and before Bakugou could react. All Might. All Might then started to explain Ofa and his and Titan's secret to Bakugou. You are a candidate for Ofa, so you better start training your body. You will be evaluated by me, the principal of UA, an old friend of mine, and my old sidekick during your first year in UA, and if you are approved, then you will receive my quirk. Tell your parents to come to my house tomorrow. Me and Titan have some errands to run so we'll be a little late, but I think Izuku will be able to keep your parents occupied. Speaking of D Izuku, does know about your secret, and shouldn't he be the one inheriting your quirk? I thought of that too, but he doesn't have what it takes. Those words came out with a lot of hesitation. And no, he doesn't know our secret. Deku's so pathetic, even his parents think he's useless. Before you go, take this. It's a premium membership card to Star One Gym, train and build up your body and don't forget, you must keep this a secret. Also, you don't have to worry about the entrance exam, you'll get in through recommendations. Got it. Unknown to them, a certain Greenette heard the entire thing. But neither did he move nor did a single word come out of his mouth, because now, he had finally lost everything. So what, am I just a servant, a useless piece of trash for everyone to just throw away, don't have what it takes. As if they know me. They have been absent from most of my childhood. How could they keep such a big secret from me and for all these years, why am I so unlucky, did God create me just to laugh at me, is anything even worth it anymore? Should I just run away, will they even look for me? After reaching his home, the first thing he did was clear his room of everything all might, even removing his family photo and a childhood photo of him and Bakugou from his desk. First I need some sleep, then I need to get my life back on track. Geneva. So, how many months do I have left? I am sorry to say this sir, but you are no longer in the month's territory. Schmidt knew what F-A-U-L-K-N-E-R his butler doctor meant once he saw the saddened expression on the butler's face. 
Sir, you have 20, number 17 days at best. Schmidt knew his fate, he knew it was going to end. Prepare the jet. Where to sir? The pan, Musatafu. The place where I first met Elena. I know that I'm going to die, it's my fate. But I want to face it where my life truly began, maybe I will even find the one who will be worthy enough to take over my army and company. Schmidt says as he looks at the setting sun. Where one sun sets, another rises. My sun has already gone down, its light about to fade, but I have this hunch that a sun brighter than any other is rising somewhere, a sun which lead us into the brightest future. He now closed his eyes and whispered. I just hoped that I would have lived long enough to see that sun rise high in the sky. Next day. I guess today will be a good day, all I have to do is pretend and everything will be a-okay. But boy was he wrong. First, the memory of everything that happened yesterday returned, second he woke up a little so he had to skip breakfast, then on his way to school, he tripped over and fell on top of a girl, although that wasn't too bad, since the girl was also in a hurry and lastly, Bakugu. Izuku had a suspicion how Bakugu would treat him now, and so he tried to be as prepared as he could. Outside school gate. Okay, all I have to do is avoid drawing attention to myself and keep a low profile, more importantly I think I should tell Kak no Bakugu that I don't want to become a hero anymore, that should keep him away from me. Speaking of which, I should probably cancel the admission application to UA, I think going the business way is a good choice. If only yesterday morning version of me could see me right now, he would probably say that I am a fake, that the real Izuku would never give up on being a hero but miracles do happen, and with that, a hungry and disheartened Izuku Yagi walked into the hell, where a demon named Bakugu was ready to fry him in hot oil. He was about to get in the class, but stopped to listen to the commotion inside. Whoa. That's a premium membership card to Star One Gym, the best gym in all of Japan. Holy shit man. Many high tier pros go there to work out. How the hell did he get that, even money cannot buy it. See I fucking told you I am better than all of you, and guess what extras, I don't have to give some stupid entrance exam to get into UA, I'm getting in through recommendations. Well Bakugu is still Bakugu. Just then, Izuku felt a tap on his shoulder. Yagi, are you going to get in or just stand in front of the door? Class is about to start in 7 minutes. Okay. He opened the door to get in discreetly, but the creaking of the door drew everyone's attention to him. And as he suspected. Baku. I've had enough of this shit. Come here you useless piece of trash Bakugu called with a very harsh tone. Izuku walked over to Bakugu and said the one word that no one would have expected Izuku Yagi to say. But now, Bakugu he said with a tone so disinterested that even made their teacher, who was about to walk into the classroom. The second time the classroom was silent because of Izuku, but this time for a whole different reason. Almost all of the students knew how much Izuku was bullied and beaten up by Bakugu, but not once did he address Bakugu by his name, let alone only his surname. If you don't want to say anything, I'm gonna go back to my seat. But before going, he said something that would have shocked the entire school if it was present there. Oh, and Bakugu, I will cancel my admission form for UA today. Why? Because it turns out that you were right, I am just a quirkless wannab. I understand that, and that's why I'm declaring that I don't want to become a hero anymore. This time it was Bakugu's turn to speak. Huh. Finally you understand that you are nothing but useless trash. Now with Deku out of the way, I am definitely going to become richest and most popular hero of all time. Richest and most popular, can't believe that I idolized him. Slowly the class recovered from the shock and returned to normality. Then the teacher fully walked in after standing halfway through the door like a statue. Alright everyone, quiet down. Take out your books and turn to chapter 7. The rest of the school day went as normal, leaving out Izuku. The once muttering and hero enthusiastic boy was now quiet and didn't read or write about anymore, instead during the free period, he read some business books he took from the library. He even stopped responding to and started ignoring Bakugu and his death threats. But this did not suit Bakugu. Damn nerd, who the fuck dies he think he is, I'll teach him after school, I'll fucking break him into tiny pieces. Before the school was over, the principal announced a reminder that the school will remain closed for two weeks due to renovation. After school. Izuku was walking down the hallway alone after his lab duty. When he exited the school gates, he was immediately knocked down to the ground. Who the fuck do you think you are Deku? Izuku tried to get up, but was kicked down by one of Bakugu's goons. Not so fast asshole, I'm gonna beat you down till you cannot move. And then, three minutes of merciless beatdown began. Izuku kept taking punch after punch, kick after kick, after which he was on all fours, his school uniform torn and tattered. Just as Bakugu was about to turn around and go home, Izuku moved slowly, trying to get up. His whole body felt warm, like he was under the sun. Ah dumb. I may not want to become a hero anymore. Ah dumb. 
But that doesn't mean that I will. Ah dumb. Let him treat me like trash. Then he did the unthinkable, he got up and punched Bakugu in the face, and although it was a weak punch, it was enough to knock Bakugu onto the ground. Ah dumb. Ah dumb. I can pant do this all day Izuku said while taking a fighting stance he saw in a movie once. Bakugu soon got up, shocked and filled with rage, but what all the boys didn't notice was that Izuku was glowing a very faded intensity of white. I'll fucking murder you Bakugu said as he prepared his quirk. Come. Be a dumb. At me. Just as Bakugu was about to fire off an explosion. Hey, stop it there. They all turned their heads to see a tall man, with dark black hair and black eyes, wearing a pollution mask and grey trench coat standing there. I'll get you when school starts Deku. Fucking remember that Bakugu and his goons ran away as fast as they could. Hey, stop. The man tried to stop them from getting away because the boys were much faster. He then walked to Izuku to see if he was severely injured. Are you alright? I'm fine, thank you for saving me. No problem, now get up, we have to go to the police station. That is not necessary, we were just playing. Bruised body and torn clothes doesn't look like playing to me. It's fine, really. I should just go home. It seems like there is no arguing with you. But before you go take this the man then proceeded to take off his coat and gave it to Izuku. Wear this and go, wouldn't look nice for you to be walking around with torn clothes Izuku was about to protest, and before you say no and explain all the reasons why you can't take it, let me tell you something, I have a lot of coats at home, the man put a large amount of emphasis on the lot part. Thank you for this. And for saving me. Again, don't mention it, now hurry on, your parents might be getting worried. My parents, worried. Yeah right. Izuku started to run to his home as it was getting late, but when he crossed two streets, Izuku realized that his phone had fallen somewhere, probably fell out of his pocket as it was torn. Damn it, today has been the second worst day of my life. Wait, I think it may have fallen when I was on the ground. But the Delbert. What a peculiar kid Schmidt was about go when he saw a phone lying on the ground, he picked it up to see that it was green and a little broken. Must be that kid's phone, I'll take it to the police station. Schmidt took out his phone to call for a pickup, but he felt something cold touching his neck, and Schmidt, being a weapons designer, knew exactly what it was. The Delbert Schmidt the man spoke. Schmidt instantly recognized the voice. Bill Johnson how are you still alive Bill Johnson is a fanatic. His only purpose in life is to kill quirkless people. He pulled Schmidt by the back of his collar and pinned him against the nearest wall, with Schmidt facing the wall, causing the pollution mask to fall off. That doesn't matter, you you ruined everything, my noble plan, my my holy crusade, all gone thanks to you and your army, the crazed man said. Kidnapping and brainwashing children with your quirk to kill innocent people is not noble. Innocent. What innocent? All the quirkless men, women and children are a plague to society, they dirty everything with their impure and inferior bodies. They may be inferior in your eyes, but they are still human beings, they deserve to live. Shut up. All the quirkless need to fucking die, I will form another army, and a great holy cleansing crusade, the will of God will start and every quirkless person will die, and people who support them will also fucking die starting with why. Smack. The maniac didn't get to finish his sentence as he was smacked with a garbage bin so hard that he got coed instantly. Schmidt turned around to spot the green-haired boy from earlier, holding a newly dented garbage bin. I guess we're even, Mr. Schmidt. I guess we are. But Izuku, minutes before. I think Lady Luck hates me. Izuku finally reached the spot of the earlier incident only to the man from earlier being pinned to the wall by another man, who looked like he had a gun in his hand. Be a dumb. Should what should I do? Be a dumb. Should I run and call the police? Wait, I don't have my phone with me, think Izuku think. Be a dumb. Be a dumb. Izuku backed up to hide behind a few garbage bins, but all of that went down the drain once the man with what gun started shouting. Izuku's body started to move on its own. He grabbed one of the garbage bins with both of his hands and ran with it towards the confrontation. He hit the man with the gun with everything his battered body had, instantly knocking the maniac out cold. The man from earlier turned his head to show a face which Izuku immediately recognized, and so he said the only thing that came to his mind. I guess we're even, Mr. Schmidt. I guess we are the man replied. Outside Izuku's house. Now, Kitsuki behaved themselves, and no swearing or shouting in front of my friends. Inko and Tashinori are my friends first, then your uncle and aunt. A woman with sand hair said while holding her son's ear, with her husband following behind. Let go of me you fucking hag. Now show some manners, or you are going to beg to dear god that you never existed. She gave death glare so scary that it would make even the most hardcore of heroes tremble. The glare made both the son's and the father's blood freeze. Fine, just let go of. Now go ring the doorbell, and be nice to Izuku. 
Yeah right, as if I would be nice to that waste of space, he should feel lucky to even stand in my presence. Ding tong. Izuku opened the door to see the Bakugus. Oh, good evening Aunt Mitsuki and you too Uncle Maseru, please come in Izuku said in a monotone voice. Thank you Izuku. You see this Katsuki, this is called manners. Why can't you be more like Izuku? Katsuki just scowled. Please, make yourself at home. So Izuku, what are you planning to do with a two-week vacation? He'll probably be sitting his quirkless ass in his chair and play video games for 14 days. Katsuki. What did I tell you? What, that's what he'll do, aren't you Deku Katsuki said with a smirk. Well actually, I do have plans, Izuku said with a hint of annoyance in his voice. And what might that? I got a part-time job. As if someone will hire your quirkless ass. Smack. Stop hitting me you old hag. I'll fucking kill Yoshibzen kitten. Mitsuki had pushed Katsuki's head into the sofa armrest to silence him. Both Izuku and Masaru sweat dropped. That's wonderful, where did you get it? Mitsuki said with a smile while still pushing Katsuki's head into the armrest. It's near the city center by the huge mall. It's more like an internship as if I can impress the person who hired me within the next 14 days, his company will take me in as soon as I graduate from high school. That's great news. You're only 13 and already have a job, take notes Katsuki. Anyway, what's the pay? Oh it's... Ding tong. Izuku didn't get to finish the sentence as he was interrupted by the doorbell. I'll get it. He opened the door to see his parents, Inko Titan Yagi and Tashinori All Might Yagi. Oh, it's you people. Izuku turned around leaving the door open. That was different, usually he would hug us both the Yagis thought. Don't you want to tell us about anything interesting that might have happened while we were away Inko asked hoping to get an answer. No, nothing interesting, although I did get a part-time job. Besides I'm old enough for the tell us what happened while we were away thing. This is definitely different, he would tell us about the smallest thing with the greatest enthusiasm his parents thought. And then there was the I'm old enough part. If that's all, I'll be going to bed, I have to wake up early. But, Izuku my boy, we've brought Katsu and Tashinori said when he showed him the plastic bags. I'm full, Izuku simply said as he turned around to go into his room. Okay, something is definitely wrong, usually he would go hyper even talking about Katsu and every one of them, leaving out Katsuki, thought. Izuku, are you alright? This time it was Misaru who spoke up. Never better, thanks for the concern. He said with a small smile but in a disinterested tone. Wait, Izuku you didn't tell us about your paycheck, Mitsuki asked hoping to get his attention. Izuku turned his back. It's 700,000 yen he simply said before going to his room as he didn't bother to answer any other questions. As soon as he reached his room, he dropped onto his bed, the only thing going through his head was the encounter few hours ago, the encounter with the first person who said that he could become a hero without a quirk, although at this point, he had already come to terms that he won't be a hero. Flashback. What you did there was pretty brave, kid. Most people, even older than you would've just turned a blind eye and gone in the other direction. Thank you Mr. Schmidt. But even though I don't know what happened, my body kinda acted on its own. Before I even knew it, I was running with a trash can, Izuku told with a half laugh while blushing. This kid. Speaking of which, what were you doing on these streets alone without bodyguards, you do know that you have tens if not hundreds of enemies. I was recollecting old memories. Oh, like for nostalgia. Something like that. So what's your quirk? You have great potential of becoming a hero. This question and praise instantly made Izuku sad. I could have gotten a quirk, but I don't have what it takes to be a hero, my own father told me. For the longest time I wanted to help people, from when I was 3 years old I, I wanted to do good, become a hero for the sake of being one, but I realize now that all I've been doing was holding on to a fantasy, but now I know that it's not possible for me to become a hero. And why is that? I'm quirkless. This answer immediately changed the mood of the conversation. Izuku thought he knew what Schmidt will say next. That doesn't matter. Huh. Real heroes are not defined by their quirks, it's their willpower, their courage and their untamed desire to help those in need. With the right amount of training you can become a hero. Izuku had waited for the longest time to hear those words, but it didn't matter anymore, he had already lost his ambition. Thank you but, it's not possible. It's I there's no use arguing with you right? Anyway for saving me I think that you deserve a treat after which I shall give you a lift home, and I won't take no for an answer. Izuku, who hadn't eaten anything since morning, had no other choice, because if he said no, he probably wouldn't be able to make it home. Fine. After having dinner, in Schmidt's limousine. Say, you said that you wanted to go for business, right? Yup. Well how about, I hire you for the next 14 days and be your teacher, and if you can impress me within those days, my company will immediately hire you once you graduate, how does that sound? 
Well I think only a fool would decline such an offer. I'll take it. That's what I like to hear. Schmidt then took out one of his visiting cards and signed behind it and also wrote special pass on it. My time is running out, these 15 days are all I have left and I hope you are the one, Hezuku. Come to the given address tomorrow at 9am sharp. Okay, thank you very much sir. Wait. Stop the car, that's my house. Izuku got out of the limo, but before going asked about his paycheck. Sir, I don't want to be rude, but can I ask what my paycheck is? It's completely fine if you don't want to tell me. Adelbert thought for a second but smiled and answered his question. It's 700,000 yen per week. 700,000. If you want to I can increase it. No 700,000 is fine. Well then, it's getting late and you should get some sleep good night Izuku. Good night to you too sensei and thanks for the food. Many people would have increased the amount, I think that I have found the one. Next day. What is this place? Izuku thought, completely oblivious to the fact that he was naked and flying. He was surrounded by clouds of all sizes. He was flying through them, over them, under them. Izuku looks in every direction, but all he can see are clouds, not the types to make it rain or storm, but peaceful ones, clear skies above said clouds and endless horizons. Is this the sky? Under normal circumstances Izuku would have slapped himself for asking such a retarded question, but this was not a normal circumstance. The sky, instead of being blue, was shining golden white, and the clouds were glowing brilliant hues of yellow and gold. And out of the blue, it started to drizzle, but not with water, but with white particles. Izuku was in complete bliss, the particles were hitting him like raindrops, but instead of feeling what he expected, he only felt just small pricks of cold before feeling warm, it was as if his body was absorbing the particles. A little while later, the particle shower stopped, leaving an energized Izuku. Let's see what I can do now he started to fly with absolute joy and happiness, he started doing loops and barrel rolls. Izuku decided to test his limit and began going heavenward. Let's see how far I can go. He kept going higher and higher. The light from the sky was getting brighter and brighter to the point that if anyone else would have seen the light, their eyeballs would have melted through their skull. But it didn't phase Izuku, the light didn't strain his eyes. He didn't know why, but he felt like he was the happiest person alive. Whoa ho. Thump. Ha. Huh. Izuku looked around to find himself on the floor of his room. It felt so real. Izuku got up to check his phone to see what time it was, since he put away his all night clock. 4.30, still dark. I have a lot of time before I have to meet Sensei, I think I will go out for a walk, All Might and Titan are still asleep I think. Izuku changed into a simple blue tracksuit and pants, and wore a pair of runners he bought a few weeks ago. He carefully snuck out of the house to not wake up the pro heroes, and started to jog lightly. Man, that dream was something else he thought as he jogged towards the nearest beach to observe the dawn break. I still feel like I could just fly away, what's more is that dream suddenly made me want to look at the sunrise. Izuku soon arrived at the beach. He went near the water and waited for the sun to rise. I wonder what kind of things I have to do today, maybe dealing with accounts, maybe management or maybe even basic weapons designing. Oh no. What if I disappoint him on the first day, I don't want to embarrass myself. Izuku was about to go into a panic attack when he noticed the distant horizon lightening up. Well, at least I can watch the sunrise. As soon as the first rays of sunlight hit Izuku, his entire body began to glow white with a little touch of gold. And although it was not blinding, it was bright enough for Izuku to notice. He could actually feel himself becoming more aware of his surroundings and felt more energized. It was like he got charged like a cell phone. He just stood there for the entire sunrise. When the last bit of the sun went above the horizon, his body finally stopped glowing. There was only one thing that ran through Izuku's mind. What the fuck was that? He soon began to panic like there was no tomorrow. A million thoughts went through his head. Is this my quirk? Did that strange dream have something to do with this? Why did it show up nine years after when it was supposed to? Ring ring. Izuku was brought out of his thoughts and questions by his phone ringing. He took it out to see that it was Titan. Hello? Izuku? Yeah. Where are you? Your father and I are worried sick. I'm fine, just wanted to take a walk, besides what are you too afraid of anyway? It's just that the streets are dangerous nowadays, especially after the sludge villain incident, and we also wanted to tell you that we have to go back to Tokyo today for some important business meeting, and thought if you wanted a lift here. I think I'm old enough to defend myself or at the very least capable of calling for help. I know I'm quirkless, but at least have some faith in me. And no I don't want your lift Izuku retorted before hanging up. Something is definitely wrong with him, me and Tashi have to talk to him as soon as we come back. Izuku returned home to find some breakfast and a note saying that his parents will come back after three weeks. 
Izuku half-heartedly ate the breakfast, got ready and began his short journey to the office building, nervous as hell. Outside the office, 8.57. Izuku stood outside of a very modern-looking office building. So this is it. This is where my life begins. One small step for me, one giant leap for me, damn it Izuku no time to make jokes. He was about to enter, but was stopped by two heavily armed and armored guards, whose name tags read out William and Kaido. What do you think you're doing, don't you know that the boss is inside? Anyone without an ID or special pass is forbidden to go inside. Wait, I do have a pass. Izuku then gave the visiting card from yesterday to the guards, the guards at first thought that it was a joke, since the CEO stopped using that type of visiting card, then they scanned it to make sure it was genuine. And it was. Sorry for the inconvenience sir. Both the guards were now standing in attention which startled Izuku and made him very confused. It's fine, everyone makes mistakes. Thank you sir. Can I ask you something? Anything, sir. Why are you calling me sir? I mean I'm just here for an internship, I don't even work here yet. The guards looked at each other and thought the same thing. Does he not know? Sir, you carrying this particular type of business card already makes you a high priority individual, moreover, this card has his signature on it, which only shows your importance. This means that you can even ask for pickups and bodyguards. The first guard spoke. Show this card to anyone from the office, and they would be happy to provide any help they can. Also, just show this to the people working in the cafeteria, and they'll give all the food you want for free, and yes they will address you by sir. The second one added. Now Izuku was extremely confused, how could he, an intern get HPI status, that too granted by the CEO of the company. Izuku would have pondered a little more, then he realized that he did save the man's life, yesterday. But still, he did not expect the HPI status. Well T then, I should get going. Can you please tell me where Mr. Schmidt is? Sure thing, he's in the VIP lounge, second floor. Anything else, sir? Before Izuku entered, he said something which the guards didn't expect someone with a HPI status to say, mostly because till date, everyone who got that status were spoiled arrogant assholes. Who would misuse the power and often misbehave with the people working in the office and even offices in other parts of the world, which led to Schmidt not giving anyone HPI status for a long time until yesterday. Yes, I do have a request, please tell everyone in the office to not call me sir, it does not look nice, nor does it feel right to me. I mean, everyone in the office is way more experienced in work and life than me, moreover all of you are at least 7 years older than me, if anything I should be the one calling you sir. Anyways, I should get going, see you later, William and you too Kaido. After which, Izuku went inside. The two guards and the office workers who were about to enter, were thoroughly impressed with the kid's behavior, and only one thought was present in their minds. What a kind and humble young man. What they didn't know was that the CEO and his butler were listening to the entire conversation from the balcony, all the while smiling to themselves. You've made the right choice sir. I guess I did, Faulkner. I guess I did. The IP lounge. Izuku knocked on the door before entering the lounge, the door opened to reveal a man, most likely in his forties with grey hair and brown eyes. You must be Izuku Yagi, I'm Joseph Faulkner, Mr. Schmidt's butler and doctor, nice to meet you the butler with the oddly cliché British accent said. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Faulkner Izuku said while shaking Faulkner's hand. Come on in, Adelbert is waiting for Izuku to go in and immediately recognize a certain person sitting on the couch of the very expensive looking lounge, sorting some papers, next to him were three small boxes. Ah, Izuku you made it exactly on time. Didn't want to disappoint you, sensei. Schmidt only gave a small smile. Come and take a seat Izuku did as he was told and took the seat beside the CEO. So here's how your internship will go, for the first 7 days, you will answer these multiple choice questions that I have prepared for you, I think you will be able to complete them within 1 hour, after which a couple of the office workers will teach you about management, accounting, entrepreneurship, physics, chemistry, and I will teach you about basic weapon mechanics and design. At the end of the day you will give another test related to everything that you've been taught throughout the day. I know that it will be tough and that I'm asking a lot from you, but you must understand that your school will reopen soon and I won't be here anymore. Next week we'll go to Munich to teach you about army management and to increase your tactical skills. Also, you will help the office workers with the knowledge you acquire, which is why I will be paying you. So how does it sound? I'll do it, I am extremely lucky to have a teacher like you, and I will do anything to make you proud of me, I will not give you a single chance to complain. No hesitation, eh? I like it. But there is one thing that I did not understand, what do you mean that you won't be here anymore? Oh, by that I mean that I will be in Africa. Of course, you know terrorist groups and things of those nature, nothing for you to worry about. Anyway, here this is your MCQ test paper, and I've got something else for you. 
Schmidt then took the three boxes and opened them. The first box contained a very expensive custom-made cell phone, the second one contained a very expensive watch, and the third contained an expensive pin. Take these, and yes, I won't take no for an answer, I saw how badly damaged an old gen your phone is, and since you will be doing a lot of con calls, you will need a better phone. Thank you sensei, very much. I should tell you about the two speed dials of the phone. You see, if you press the power button seven times, a limo will be dispatched immediately to your location from the office building, and if you press the same button 16 times, a secure and defend sect of squad will be sent to you. This is because you are learning directly under me, and I can't have any student of mine be in dangerous situations without giving them a way out of it. I understand. Now then, start your test. Seven days later. Seven days have gone by, and every single one of Izuku's teachers were impressed with the boy, he had also become popular with all the workers of the office, since he always helps them with even the smallest things. The entire office respected him and was very attached to the boy, not because he was HPI status, but because of his genuine good personality. Moreover, he never wanted much, he only wanted the office workers to accept him as he was and they did. Schmidt couldn't be more sure that he picked the right person to hand down his company, as the morning tests had secret moral questions, and as he expected, Izuku picked only the best answers. Izuku also assumed that the whole sunrise thing happens after every seven days, since it happened today too. He would look into it more after his internship was over. Izuku was getting ready to leave after his seventh day when he was stopped by Schmidt. Izuku, you have impressed not only me, but the entire office. You also passed all the tests with flying colors, how does it make you feel? To be honest sensei, even I can't believe it, in just a week, my whole life has changed for the better. It happens, anyway here that Schmidt handed him an envelope, Izuku opened it to find a credit card and bank passbook with Izuku's name on it. What is this? Your salary. Salary. Oh, salary Izuku said half screaming. I completely forgot about that, but I kinda feel like I should be the one paying you guys since all of you taught me. After hearing this, Adelbert smiled. Nonsense, you've helped a lot of people here. Now go and get yourself some new clothes and a bag. Meet me at 8am on the rooftop helipad tomorrow. We're heading to Munich. And don't worry about any passport or visa. Thanks for this opportunity sensei, you have no idea how much you've helped me. Izuku said before leaving the building. And you have no idea how much ease you've made me, Izuku Yogi Schmidt said to no one in particular. He had only six days left rather than eight to make the final decision as after another checkup, he discovered that the cancer cells were growing a little faster than they previously were. Munich. Never in his wildest dreams did Izuku think that he would go to Germany, but here he was, on a private jet that was about to land on German soil. After being driven to the Seven Star Hotel where he would be staying for the foreseeable future, he was given instructions on where and when he was to meet Schmidt and also what he would be learning. The first two days went by more than perfectly, with Izuku already impressing his new teachers with his personality, tactical and analytical skills but on the third day, all hell broke loose. Izuku was asked to make a report of a past battle, but he didn't have the writing materials, and since Izuku didn't like others to do his work, he went to the closest mall to buy them, Schmidt also joined him, but told his bodyguards to stay outside the mall as he didn't want to look intimidating, much to their protest. So Izuku, do you have everything you need? Yes, sensei, all I need now are a couple of file covers, and I'll be good. Boom. There was a loud explosion, screaming people and shattered glass everywhere. Izuku was shell-shocked and disoriented, he was knocked down on the ground by force of the explosion, once he got his bearings back he opened his eyes, and what he saw made his blood run cold. He saw that his sensei was being held by his neck by a villain. Izuku run. Get away from here. Be a dumb. Oh, is that someone precious to you, well don't worry, he'll die once I kill you. You've a thorn on my side for far too long Schmidt. Izuku didn't say anything, just stood there staring at the ground. Be a dumb. Izuku's body felt warm. The same warmth he was feeling all those days. Be a dumb. The same warmth he felt in his dream. Be a dumb. Then, Izuku's body began to glow with the same white gold color. His hair had turned gold and blonde by now. This was the moment that Izuku's quirk had shown for the first time. Let him go. Huh, or else what? I said let him go. Huh, the villain let go of Schmidt and started to walk towards Izuku. Well then, I think I should kill you in front of Schmidt. The hell are you doing Izuku, run. Adelbert said while lying on the ground. I'm gonna have fun pummeling you to death, boy. The villain lifted his arm to kill Izuku, but then, the unthinkable happened. Izuku, on instinct, directed all the power of his entire body to his right arm and punched the villain with so much force that it sent him through four buildings. 
The shock wave was so great that it sent everyone 25 feet in the other direction, and the resulting air pressure took their breaths away, literally. Izuku was exhausted and felt severe pain in his arm. About 5 seconds later, he passed out due to the pain and lack of stamina. Last thing he heard was Schmidt calling out his name. Izuku's hotel room, fourth day. Izuku woke up to see the face of Schmidt and Faulkner. Finally awake I see said Faulkner. Good morning, wanna have breakfast joked Schmidt. Very funny Izuku tried to get up, but felt that his entire right arm was bandaged. What the hell happened? You tell me, I thought you said you were quirkless. Moreover, how the heck did you turn blonde? Exclaimed Schmidt. I don't know, I thought I was quirkless too, but. It seems that Izuku's quirk was dormant, both Izuku and Schmidt raised an eyebrow at Faulkner's statement. Dormant. Yes, dormant, they may not be common, but they aren't impossible. You see, sometimes, to activate a quirk, a person needs to be, let's say, motivated. That's exactly what happened to you, Izuku. Did you ever feel any change in your body when you were in a tight situation? And then it clicked in his head, everything made sense. Yes. Every time I was in a bad situation, my body felt warm, although I discarded the idea of that being my quirk. Well whatever it was, you need to control it, look at what it did to your body. Anyway Faulkner let the boy have some rest. The entire hotel is under my protection, so you don't have to worry about anyone attacking it. Also, don't worry about your school, I already informed the principal that you would rejoin after one week due to your injury, you should probably tell your parents about it too. I'll send a message. Before Schmidt left, he said his final live words to Izuku. Izuku, you have no idea how much you've helped me, I can finally be at peace now. Geez, no need to get all emotional on me, Izuku said with a smile. Adelbert returned it with sad smile. If only I could have seen you grow into the shining sun. Bye and good night Izuku. Good night sensei. Why do I feel like it's the last time I'm going to see him? Outside the hotel. Faulkner, call the lawyers. The next day Schmidt took to his bed. With Izuku, morning of the sixth day. I wonder why sensei didn't visit yesterday, may I think he's busy after the villain attack, speaking of which, I should check the news to see what was the aftermath of the attack. Izuku turned on the TV and changed to the news channel, the first line he saw made him beg and pray to God that it wasn't true. But it was true. Geneva. Izuku stood still in silence inside a beautiful enclosure with a small pond in it. In front of him lie three gravestones. The first one reading. Elena Schmidt. Beloved wife and mother. The second one read. Jonathan Schmidt. Beloved son. And finally the third one read. Adelbert Schmidt. Beloved husband, father and. Mentor. Izuku was standing there, unable to even speak. The whole world may have felt the shockwaves of Adelbert's death, but no one felt it more than Izuku. He hadn't eaten properly in three days. Izuku a voice called him from behind, he turned around to see Faulkner and his wife Maria. Oh, hey Joseph. Izuku you've been standing there for three hours now, I think you should eat something. Thanks but, I'm not hungry. Nonsense, the only thing that you've eaten in three days are nine pieces of bread and six eggs. I know Joseph, but I'm completely lost. I don't know where to go from here. After hearing this, Joseph gave Izuku a smile, the type of smile that doctors give when they say that everything would be okay. Adelbert told me you would say that, so he told me to give this to you. Joseph took out a flash drive from his pocket and gave it to Izuku. What's in this? I don't know, but he told me to give it to you. Okay I'll check it now itself Izuku said with little enthusiasm. Inside his hotel room in Geneva. Izuku plugged in the flash drive and saw only one video file in it by the preview pic, he could tell that the clothes were a little torn, meaning that it was recorded the day of the villain attack. Izuku then played the video. Izuku, by the time you see this, I'm probably dead. Now before you start a depressed morning session, let me tell you a little about my past. You see I was an orphan, but just like you, I wanted to become a hero. A hero whose only purpose was to help and save people. I even came up with my hero name Atlas. But all that went down the drain when I found out that my quirk only gave me intelligence. At first I became depressed, then with quirk I began developing weapons and defense machines that I gave to countries in hopes that they would keep their borders safe. Then I met her, Elena, the most beautiful lady I had ever seen. We got married and even had a baby boy who she named after Father Jonathan. Me and my family were happy for a time, until that too was taken away from me. My wife and son died during a villain attack. This led me to isolating myself for three whole years. Then I founded the PMC. I was happy when I found out that my PMC was being praised as a peacekeeping group rather than mercenaries. Then I was diagnosed with cancer and all of my hope was gone again. I'm not saying about my past to get sympathy from you Izuku, or to show you that I am free from my suffering. 
No, I'm telling this so that you know that life will never be fair, you will have many hurdles, you will fall many times, but you must get up. I got back up many times in Izuku. But now it's your turn. The real reason I recruited you was because you were one of the few good men left. I recruited you because I saw the future in your eyes. I recruited you because you are the one, the one I have been looking for so many years, the one worthy to take over my army and company. Use it to help people. By this time, Izuku was clutching his heart, crying as all the emotions started to pour out. You have no idea what I would give up to watch you grow up into a good, understanding, caring, and strong man. I know that you will become Izuku. But before I go, I'm going to tell you what I told you the first day we met. Now that you have a quirk. Izuku Yagi, you can become a hero. I want you to train with everything you have. I will. I want you to become the best hero the world has ever seen. I will. I want you to do the right thing. I will. I don't want you to become number one, I want you to be legendary. I will. Thank you, Sensei. And lastly I want you to test your barriers, your limits. I will become a hero. And when you find your limits break through them. Eldera Junior High, Musatafu. Yagi. Izuku Yagi the homeroom teacher called out, but no response. He's been absent for a whole week now. Although this boss of his contacted the principal, I will have to talk to his parents, teacher said to himself, thinking about why Izuku was absent from class for one entire week. If it was any other student, he would let it slide, but this was Izuku Yagi, the most studious student in the class, perhaps the entire school. Once he came to school with a burning fever and one time he attended classes with a fractured arm, much to the doctor's protest. So seeing him not coming to school was quite the shocker both for the students and the teachers. Hey Bakugu, do you think the Deku is absent because of last to last week's beatdown? Yeah, I think he's scared after punching you. Both of Bakugu's goons said. I don't care why he's absent, as long that useless trash is not in my presence, Bakugu said and if he shows his face again, I'll fucking kill him he thought to himself. Right then, the class's attention was drawn to the door. It opened to reveal the principal of the school. He called the teacher out of the class to tell him something. Minutes later the teacher walked in with an announcement. Alright everyone, I've got an announcement to make. Izuku Yagi won't be attending this school anymore. Before the teacher spoke, everyone was disinterested, but after the announcement was made, everyone started murmuring. Many were happy and many were sad, sad not because they were friends with him. No, they were sad because they couldn't copy his homework or cheat him during the exams. But one thought was going through everyone's mind, why did he leave? Some thought that it was because of the bullying, others thought it was because of patronizing. Another question came to everyone's mind, did Izuku find another school, or did he drop out? After some moments of pondering, Bakugu spoke up. Hey teacher, did Deku tell any reason why he left the school? Bakugu asked, worried if he was the reason why Izuku left, not because he cared for him, but because if Mr. and Mrs. Yagi found out about the bullying. Also, which school is he in now? Yes, he did write something on why he left and where he is now. The principal walked in holding a piece of paper. His reasons for leaving the school are. 1. Inadequate teaching. 2. Teachers turning blind eye towards the behavior of students towards him. 3. The looking down and condescending behavior towards him due to his quirklessness, and. The fourth reason was patronizing slap to every student's face. 4. The low average mental capacity, thinking power and brain matter of students. Everyone was shocked, angry, guilty and a bit sad because they felt how Izuku felt. Who the fuck does that quirkless trash think he is? Bakugu was about to explode, both physically and metaphorically. I need to find out which school he goes to now, and when I find him. Hey teach, where does he go to now, I need to teach him a foo freaking lesson at this, few of the students began to cheer for Bakugu. Well, you better stop dreaming of teaching him a lesson, because honestly, he is beyond reach for you. Teacher, what do you mean beyond reach? He is in Germany. Silence. And he now goes to Rheinmetall Advanced Education. What? The whole class exclaimed together, also, to add insult to injury. For 100 positive votes and before you ask how he got in, he simply wrote I am better than all of you, that's how I got in. How heck did he get in? Was the collective thought, because someone cannot buy their way or just excel in the entrance exam of that school. The only way they can enter is by getting a major vote percentage within 17 teachers after being interviewed by them, and Izuku Yagi, the quirkless Deku got in with 17 yeses. Are we talking about the same Izuku Yagi? Some student asked. Yes, we are talking about the same Izuku Yagi, the Izuku Yagi that all of you look down upon for being quirkless, that Izuku Yagi is now studying in Rheinmetall Advanced Education, one of the best schools till date. Everyone else had mixed reactions, some feeling jealous, others ashamed, but Bakugu was full of rage. One day, I'm going to find out, Deku. But All Might and Titan. 
something is wrong with Izuku All Might commented. Yeah, it's been three weeks since he last talked to us, moreover, he's not back from his internship trip, I think Titan replied. Wasn't he supposed to come back a week ago? All Might asked in a worried tone. He was, I called one of the neighbors to check if he was back home, but turns out, the lights haven't been turned on in two weeks. And he gave house keys to the neighbor. I tried contacting him, but all I received were text messages saying busy. I hope nothing bad happened to him. They were heading back to their home after three weeks of no-stop hero work, both national and international, and one thing that they both agreed was that they had to figure out what was wrong with their son. After reaching their home, All Might and Titan, in their normal attire, ordered food as they were too tired to cook. After having their food, they tried to contact Izuku. At first they called him, but he would not pick up the phone. They also tried messaging him, but got no response. Then checked his Facebook account to get any clues, but they saw that the last time he was active was three weeks ago, the last time they talked to him. This was starting to really worry the parents as their son was very addicted to Facebook, although he didn't have any friends, and seeing him not log in for three weeks was a telltale sign that something had happened. Did he give any address of his job? Toshinori asked. No, but I'll go and check his room to see if he left any notes Inko answered, choosing those particular set of words fearing the worst. Toshinori also knew what his wife meant, but prayed for it to not be the truth. Praying that his son didn't run away, or worse. You don't mean. We have been absent from most of his life at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if he thinks that we hate him or are avoiding him. There was a pause. So I think it's entirely possible that he ran away, Inko explained in a sad and defeated tone. She then went to the first floor and stood outside for a solid two minutes, mentally preparing herself. She then entered the room and what she saw froze her. Tashi Inko called out to him. Humming. Tashinori entered the room, only to be shocked by what he saw. The All Might admiring, no worshipping boy's room was devoid of any type of All Might merchandise. The shelves that once housed All Might toys of all shapes, sizes and forms, now lay barren, deserted. Call it hero's intuition, but Toshinori had this clawing feeling that he was responsible for this, and Inko had the very bad feeling that they were about to lose something or someone. Both of them just stood there for at least a minute straight before a phone call from downstairs pulled them out of their shocked states. They hurried downstairs to answer the phone, hoping that it was their son. And it was. They put the phone on speaker. Hello Izuku. Where are you? I've been so worried. You didn't respond to phone calls or text messages. You've even been inactive from Facebook Inko asked desperately and worriedly. Yes son, we. There was a brief pause, Inko and Toshinori looking at each other, both of them knew what they had to do, they couldn't hide it from their son after getting those bad feelings. What they didn't know was that we're in for a heck of a surprise. Have something very important to tell you. All Might spoke. After a brief pause he spoke again. It's regarding our jobs and the truth of who we are. No. Huh? No, I'm not coming back, All Might Izuku said in a cold tone filled with anger. Both the parents stopped, unable to form any words, and by listening to Izuku's cold tone and underlying anger, they both knew they messed up bad. Izuku please don't say things like that, we wanted to tell you for the longest time but... But what huh? Afraid that some villain will try to abduct me, afraid that I would be crushed after hearing that my dad is the N01 hero, and my mom is N017 hero, and I don't have any quirk, or afraid that I would become a spoiled egotistical child. Which excuse is it, please do tell. We they were having problems trying to form sentences. Both of you have no clue what I've been through the past 10 years. I know that being a hero is difficult, and it's even harder to spend time with family, but you have no clue how much I hated myself for being quirkless and helpless. Helpless because both of you were never there for me. The number of times I wanted to talk to you about my problems, about how I was treated in school, but all you two did was shrug it off, completely ignoring it. And I always thought that you hated me for being quirkless, which you probably do. No, we could never possibly hate you, please don't Inko said with teary eyes. I don't want to hear anything you have to say anymore I have made up my mind, I am not coming back, never, and please don't call me your son, any relation we had, is broken. Aizu please, we're sorry both the older Yagis were crying at this point. Sorry doesn't fix the scars of the torment I went through. And all might, you have no right to tell if I'm worthy or not. Not of inheriting your quirk. But of becoming a hero with it he hung up. Ashinori and Inko Yagi were crying their eyes out, holding on to each other, trying to comfort each other as now, they have lost the most precious thing of their lives. But Izuku. Was that too cold? He thinks for a second, before throwing his old phone into a river. Will you ever forgive them or talk to them, Izuku? Asked Faulkner. In the future maybe. Now, not a chance, Izuku replied. Anyway, you requested for me. Yes I did. I need a proper diet and a workout routine. 
inside Izuku's apartment. Faulkner, I want you along with the best pediatricians, body trainers, quirk trainers and bodybuilders to make a diet and workout routine. The type of routine that will push my body to its extreme limits but not kill me. I have an idea of what my quirk is, so bring in a trainer with strength enhancement quirk. Also, call someone who can teach hand-to-hand -hand combat. Will do sir. Oh, and Faulkner, tell the media that the company is being handled by the council, for now. I will, but may I ask why sir? I don't want to be on the news before I become a pro hero, and I also don't want to walk around with 10 or 15 bodyguards. Please don't call me sir. Izuku is fine. Faulkner only nodded and left the room. Izuku then went to the balcony, watching the sunset over the city and the Rhine. The apartment was the most expensive in the entire city. It was a penthouse with seven large rooms, a living room, kitchen, a bedroom, a gym, a storage room, a study room and an office room. The apartment building itself was located by the river bank near the city center, thus making it easy for Izuku if he had to buy something. It was also located close to Rheinmetall Advanced Education, one of the best schools Europe had to offer. He managed to get in with 17 out of 17 yeses by impressing the teachers with his personality, analytical and tactical mind, ability to make good plans under pressure, and good morals. Although at first he got 16 yeses, which was very good, but after hearing who his mentor was, the last interviewer also said a yes, because if Schmidt personally taught the boy, then there must be something that the teachers hadn't seen in him yet, but were eager to find out. Well, better check what the new classes are. Izuku went to the study room and started checking the subjects in class routine. So physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, English, German language, economics, computer science and mechanics. Wow, they use the advanced education in the school name for a reason. There is also fencing, swimming, horse riding, improv and deception class. Welp it's time to bring out my inner politician. I wonder what kind of quirks the other students will have. Next day. Izuku had just returned home after having breakfast at a nearby restaurant. He went to the living room to watch some TV when the doorbell rang. Izuku opened the door to reveal Faulkner and a very muscular and tall guy. Izuku assumed him to be the trainer with the strength enhancement quirk. Faulkner then handed him the papers with a workout routine. So Izuku, there you have it, your workout routine. Me and a couple of doctors and trainers work through the night to make that routine. Thank you for that. Izuku, to be frank, the coming months will be total hell for you, are you sure you want to go through this? Faulkner asked in a serious way. Yes, yes I am. Everyone else had about 10 years to train their quirk, so I need to make these 10 months equivalent to 10 years. Commendable. Anyway, I have informed the restaurant across from the building about what your diet is, they will deliver the required food every day for the foreseeable future. Thanks. I should also introduce you to Werner Schwarzenegger Faulkner said as he looked towards the buff man. Nice to meet you Izuku Yagi, I will be your trainer for the next 10 months, not only for your body, but also for your quirk. Yes, Mr. Schwarzenegger has a degree in studying strength enhancer quirks. I heard that you were deemed quirkless due to your dormant quirk, but nothing to worry about. Strength enhancement quirks can take time to manifest, mostly due to the fact that the user's subconscious mind is masking the power, until the body is developed and capable of handling the power. Some take one extra year, some take two, but in your case, the quirk was dormant for 10 years just to show how powerful it is. Werner explained to Izuku. But, I damaged my arm when I first used it. Then that could mean only one thing, you went through a forced quirk activation. Both Izuku and Faulkner became confused. Allow me to explain, you see from the beginning of the human race, we have this power we call hysterical strength, something that gets activated when we are in extreme stress. It gives us physical strength in times of panic or near-death experiences, but nobody knows where this strength comes from. When quirks started showing up, the hysterical strength played and still plays a crucial role in activating dormant quirks. When someone without an active quirk feels he is in grave danger, the hysterical strength kicks in and shatters their mental barrier. You must have had a near-death experience. But that also meant that it would damage the user, as their body was not ready to handle the quirk's full power. Izuku thought for a second, and then everything made sense. Yes, yes this makes perfect sense now, about three weeks ago I was attacked by a villain that tried to take over my body. It really did feel like I was dying, my vision was going black, and my body felt weak. Izuku said, recalling the incident before shuddering a little. It makes even more sense as after that incident, every time I was in a bad situation my body would feel warm and my heart nearly exploded, as before the only thing that happened was my body felt warm. But soon realization dawned on him. His body was not yet ready to handle his quirk, which meant that it was impossible to get into a hero course, a good one at that. But Izuku voice became sad. That means I won't be able to apply for hero course. What do you think I'm here for? 
you did hire me to train you after all. Werner said and Izuku became confused again. But didn't you tell me that my body was not ready to handle my power? I said that your body was not ready to handle your quirk's full power. Which means that you will have to use the amount of power that your body can handle, which means say 20 or 40%, and seeing what 100% of your power can do, you would still be strong if you use even 20% of your power. After hearing this, Izuku's face and voice lightened up instantly. Well then, I should take my leave, and Faulkner handed Izuku the paper. This contains the routine and the location of Mr. Schwarzenegger's training center. We'll start your training from Monday, and I would recommend that you enjoy these two days because from Monday, your life will be hell," Werner said before leaving the apartment. Ten months, I have to make each and every second count Izuku held that thought for a second. For sensei. That word still brought bittersweet memories. He then began going through the routine. Holy shit, he wasn't lying, my life is going to become hell. His training routine consisted of. Waking up at 4 AM. 70 push-ups. 70 pull-ups. 70 jumping jacks. Then running 3.5 km to Werner's training center, where he will do. 70 seconds wall sits. 70 mountain climbers. 70 sprinters. 70 high knee. 70 squats. And weight lifting. He had to somehow do it in one and a half hours, he would then train with his quirk for another one hour. He would then return back to his apartment by running another 3.5 km. Then from 7 to 7.40, he will have to get ready for school and have breakfast. His school will start at 8 a.m. and continue till 4 p.m., six normal subject class per day, one extracurricular class and lunch break, each lasts for one hour. He would then have to finish his homework or do other things till 8 p.m., after which he would have to do 70 squats, 70 sit-ups, 70 air punches, and go for another 7 k.m. run, after which Izuku eats his dinner and goes to bed before 10 p.m. His Saturday and Sunday routine will be the same, only in these two days he trains more hours since the school is closed. On Saturdays, he would practice hand-to-hand -hand combat from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., and practice with his quirk from 12.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Same thing on Sundays, except he would meditate for four hours, then have four hours free time. Izuku's diet consisted of nothing but vegetables, chicken, skimmed milk no other dairy products, fruits, eggs and fiber-rich items, protein shakes and growth drinks. First month. The first month was the most painful for Izuku. He would often black out from the pain of his muscles that he had to endure. Sometimes, his trainer would suggest to take rest, but his only response was. I have to make each and every second of these 10 months count, and rest is a luxury I cannot afford. Second month. The second month was not as painful as the first, but still bad. He had also made progress with his quirk, learning how to control how much he wanted to use, and also found out that it was a stockpile quirk that absorbed solar radiation. He had also gained a little confidence, although he still stutter while talking in a group or talking to girls. He also had Faulkner go to Mustafa and build a house at the beach where he first absorbed the solar radiation. Third month. Izuku at this point was used to the pain. He had stopped blacking out and even trained through high fever and thunderstorms, another example of his unbreakable willpower. Izuku had also found out that his quirk also depends on stamina, as it helps convert the solar energy to kinetic energy. He had stopped stuttering and was even more confident. Fourth month. Izuku no longer felt his muscles hurt. He had grown taller due to the growth drinks. His hair had become a little dark, and he also got a haircut, think of the post-Ragnarok Thor hair color and haircut. He also discovered that he could divert different percentages of power to different sections of the body, thereby concluding that his threshold is 120%. He also learns that as he grows, the strength of his 120% will also increase. He was also confident enough to talk on stage during improv class, and also give an inspirational speech during a debate competition. Fifth month. Izuku had become more formidable at hand-to-hand -hand combat. At this point all of the teachers of the new school were praising him because of how studious Izuku was. He was also liked by his entire class as he would always help them. But the students would never take advantage of Izuku as they too helped him when he needed it. One of the students then commented that Izuku's old friends must miss him dearly, which Izuku denied. He then revealed to them that he was never really friends, and told them that was bullied, patronized and mistreated for being quirkless, and how the teacher ignored it. The whole class was in disbelief and angry. They couldn't bring themselves to believe that someone as good as Izuku never had friends and were angry, because the very thought of him being beaten up, made their blood boil. Some of the hotheads of the class even gave them their number, so that he could call them in his hour of need. The teachers now understood why Schmidt liked the boy. Izuku never said no to helping others and was always respectful to the other students. Even those who had weak quirks. Six month. 
Izuku was now working on his reflexes without using his quirk. He was also training his hand-leg eye coordination. Izuku was also learning how to use guns, rocket launchers, and also learning how to operate tanks and SPGs, with assistance. He also learned how to fly a helicopter. Izuku was also making great school progress. Seventh month. Izuku discovered that he was able to gain a type of sixth sense when he directed 20% of his power to his head. He called it predator sense. It allowed him to see through thin walls, night vision, enhanced hearing and sight, and etc. He also learned that he could direct raw solar radiation to his fists to make them glow, but it didn't have any offensive effects. Izuku had developed a likable banter filled personality because of the improv class. Eighth month. Izuku had exceeded all the expectations of Werner and Faulkner. Not only did he endure through the torturous routine, but he also finished his training two months early. Ninth month. Izuku had given his final exams, and after getting the results, he and his classmates exchanged numbers and made promises to never forget one another, and that they will always keep in touch, after which they had a party at one of the students' houses, and said their final goodbyes. Izuku had mastered as much as he could about his quirk. He thought about which hero school to go to, and even pondered about going to Rheinmetall Heroics, but decided to follow his childhood goal of going to UA. As his final exam was over by the 10th day of the month, he used the remaining 20 days to intern with firefighters and police officers. Izuku's training had also got him eight pack abs. Along with his height, hairstyle, emerald eyes and light freckled face, meant that whenever he would visit the pooler beach, every teenage girl woman, some 10 or even 20 years older than him, would stare at him with not so innocent eyes. That led to him covering up his body most of the time as he hated showing off. One of those days, he was threatened by some douch bag because he stole all the women's attention. But Izuku knocked him out with a single 20% uppercut. That earned him even more attention as not only was he good looking but also strong. Moreover the douch bag was the spoiled child of some millionaire and would harass girls or women who went to that pool. So he was crowded, thanked, complimented and even kissed by some girls. Izuku somehow managed to stutter his way out of the crowd, as although he could talk to girls, he was not good with girls in swimwear. After that day, Izuku swore to himself that he would never go to another public pool. Final month, Musatafu. Izuku returned to Musatafu, and was very impressed by how his house turned out to be. He even thought that Faulkner had gone a little overboard with the design and size of the house, it even had its own dock and helipad. Imagine Stark's Malibu house, but with a rooftop helipad and stairs leading down to a dock. The house is high-tech in every single way possible. As Izuku finished his training one month early, he had extra time to do whatever he wanted with the time he had before the exam, although he would still do his morning workout routine. While going for his morning run, he came across Dagaba Beach. A beach littered with garbage, Izuku frowned to see the place so dirty, and remembered something that the police officer he was interning with for 10 days told him. Just having hero status is not enough. Service is what matters. Izuku decided to put those words to practice. He started to clean the entire beach by himself. Cleaning for 10 hours from 7 am to 5 pm. Izuku, with the help of his quirk, managed to clean the entire beach in 20 days. He decided to train in this beach rather than the one close to his house, as this beach was roughly 3.5 km from his house. Two days later, the news of his deed made it to the newspaper, and eyewitnesses say that a boy with blonde hair was seen cleaning the beach. He would also visit the office to check on how the office workers were doing. The Musatafu branch was one of the only branches of the company, along with the Geneva, Dusseldorf and Munich branch, that knew Izuku was now the CEO, and they couldn't be happier, as the company didn't fall in the hands of someone power-hungry. Three days before the entrance exam. Okay just three more days to go, can't say I'm not nervous. If the old me was where I am now, I'm sure he would have passed out due to nervousness by now. Izuku was talking to himself like a madman while absorbing solar energy. All I have to do is play it cool, and everything will be fine, A-OK -okay, he said while simultaneously sweating like a waterfall. Holy shit, everything is not OK. What the fuck am I going to do? What if I forget everything I learned for the written exam, what? If I fail to impress the teachers? What if I wake up and realize that? This is all a stupid dream and I'm just quirkless Deku what if the Martians attack, what if Godzilla? Comes out of the ocean. Calm down Izuku, it's not the time to have a panic attack, you still have other options like Shiketsu. Even Herox is still up. Izuku said to himself. God it's so frustrating Izuku unconsciously directed 120% which is equivalent to 120% of Izuku's Ofa when he gets it. It is 20% more powerful because of the training to his right arm and punched the air with so much force that it momentarily parted the ocean in front of him before the water formed archways. Then all the displaced water was rushing towards him like a mini tsunami. 
Izuku braced himself for both the water and the pain from his broken right arm, but there was no pain in his arm. He looked down to see that his arm was completely fine. He wanted to examine his arm, but realized that a huge wave was about to gulf him, so he erected 120% to his arm again, and seconds before the wave hit him, he punched towards the sky. The air pressure generated by the kinetic energy was so great that it turned the water into drops and launched them into the sky. Wait, have I mastered my quirk I think I have I can use 120% impacts without any backlash, the now confident Izuku thought to himself before preparing another 120% impact. So he punched the air again with the same amount of force he used the last time. But this time, although it was a successful impact, he broke his entire arm, like the other times he used 120%. I need to heal this quickly. He then quickly activated Super Heal. Super Heal. Izuku can heal himself by directing 120% to his torso, which makes his heart imbue his blood with solar healing particles. However, it drains his stamina very much and makes him vulnerable and unable to defend himself or attack. Izuku immediately redirected all the energy to his torso, seconds later, his right arm was completely healed. He sat down as he was a bit exhausted from using Super Heal. He then noticed that his radiation absorption time was over, and so he concluded that he could use 120% SS without damaging himself during the recharge period. What he didn't notice was that the recoil shock wave and air pressure made a flat crater around him. So I can't harm myself during the recharge time. Good to know, I should probably request for a pickup. He then proceeded to press the power button seven times. That's quite a powerful quirk you've got there a male voice spoke. Huh? Izuku turned around to see three people who he immediately recognized. A few minutes ago. I can't believe I let you drag me into your full night petrols. The R-rated hero Midnight grumbled while walking with her two colleagues, Present Mick and Eraserhead. Yeah, last time I checked, I was the most persuasive out of us three. Mick said. I want to sleep, Midnight said in a Whitney way. Now you know why I love to sleep so much, as always said with a grin. Also this is your punishment for hiding my precious sleeping bag. Okay Mick huffed. Six days gone, one more to go. By the way, why are we going this way? All of our homes are near the main city Midnight asked Azawa. I wanted to see Dagaba Beach again, now that it has been cleaned as our applied. Oh yeah, Dagaba Beach, I have a lot of memories connected to that place Mick said. He too commented Midnight. After a couple of minutes they reached the beach and walked down the stairs to the sand. This place brings back a lot of memories, as always said with a small smile. The other pros agreed. Then out of the corner of their eyes, they noticed something. They fully turned their heads to see what looked like a boy with blonde hair, glowing. They were about to go near him to ask what he was doing when the boy raised his arm and punched the air in the direction of the ocean. For a split second, they could see that the water had parted in two, after which, they were immediately knocked down on the ground, due to the recoil shockwave. The shockwave was immediately followed up by strong winds that managed to push the pros back a little. They were about to stand up, but were knocked down by another, stronger shockwave, followed by even stronger winds. This shockwave was even more powerful because Izuku punched towards the sky, which meant that the shockwave was spreading horizontally. As they were trying to get up, they were knocked down a third time by another strong shockwave, followed by a powerful gust of wind. The pros finally were able to get back on their feet. They saw the boy sitting on the ground, and after a minute of silence, Mick spoke the only three words his mind could process. So much power Mick said in an astonished tone. Couldn't agree more Midnight told in an equally astonished tone. Imagine what would happen if his punches were directed towards us, as always said with wide eyes. I don't want to imagine that Mick said. That power felt familiar all three of them thought. They went near the boy and noticed that he was talking to himself, unaware of them. So I can't harm myself during the recharge time. Good to know, I should probably request for a picket, the boy said as he took out his phone and pressed the power button seven times in rapid succession. That's quite a powerful quirk you've got there as always said after a moment of silence. How the boy turned his face to reveal familiar looking emerald eyes and face. Oh, good morning Eraserhead, you two present Mick and Midnight Izuku said before turning his head towards the ocean. Then realization dawned on him. There were three very famous pro heroes standing behind him. Izuku immediately stood up and turned around. Eraserhead, Midnight, present Mick. Izuku half screamed. Oh my god, I am a very big fan of yours, which is why I'm geeking out, and now I'm making self-aware statements aren't I I'll stop talking now. The hero's only sweat dropped at the boy's antics. So what was that about, practicing your quirk? Azawa questioned. No, I was getting rid of some frustration. What kind of frustration relieving method was? 
If you want I could tell you some other methods, for instance, at night you could try to play with your MMMPH Midnight was about to say something, but was cut off when her face, leaving out her nose, was mummified by a racerhead scarf. Ignoring whatever she was about to say, you planning to become a hero? Ask a racerhead. I am. I want to go to UA. Well with a quirk as powerful as yours, you'll definitely get into UA Mick said. You see, there's a problem, the power that I used just then was my full power. And the problem is? Inquired Eraserhead. Let me explain. Using my full power can severely damage my body. Eraserhead, Mick and probably Midnight too. Gave him a confused look. Izuku then continued to explain that his quirk wasn't meant to show up this early, that he had only 10 months to train with his quirk, and how his quirk got activated. So how much can you use? 40% to 60%, 70% at best. Then that's not a problem, seeing what your full power can do, 60%, hell even 40% should be adequate for whatever practical exam they will have. Really? Izuku saw a couple of people in black suits standing above the stairs, and knew it was time to go. Anyway, I have to rush now, three days to get ready for the written exams. Before you go, what's your name? Izuku just smiled and said. You will know my hero name when I make my debut. But that he ran up the stairs and disappeared. This kid Izawa grinned. And although the pros didn't say anything to one another, Izuku's face reminded them of two of their old classmates, Toshinori Yagi and Inko Midoriya. Over the next few days, Izuku had studied everything he could, and also gave his attacks names. Mercury impact is 20%. Venus impact is 40%. Mars impact is 60%. Saturn impact is 80%. Jupiter impact is 100%, and solar impact is 120%. The day of the exam, outside the UA gates. So today is the day, the culmination of all my hard work for the past 10 months, will show on this day Izuku thought before going into the building. After giving the written test, the students were called into an auditorium where Izuku saw a familiar pro hero. After being instructed by Mick, the candidates headed to their respective battle centers. Outside the gates of the city, Izuku could see candidates with a very diverse range of quirks, if only he had his notebook. Hmm, my notebooks. Then he noticed a particular boy's quirk. Ida was it? Yes, do you have any questions regarding the exam? Uh, no. I was just curious if you are related to Ingenium. H how did you know? Well, I'm a very big hero nerd, and the Cavs kinda gave it away. Anyways good luck for the exam. Yeah, you too. What's your name by the way? Yagi, Izuku Yagi. A few seconds later. Right let's start Mick's voice echoed from the tower. And while the other students were still thinking about what to do, Izuku immediately took action. I need to reach the robot heavy zone fast, directing 50% to both of my legs, and 10% to both arms. As soon as he reached the hot zone, he redirected 20% to both of his legs, so that he would be able to use the remaining 80% as he wanted. At first he used a Saturn impact to destroy a line of 1 pointers, giving him 10 points. Then he used Mars impacts to take out a couple of 2 and 3 pointers, earning him another 21 points. In a dark room, many people were watching the candidates take out robots. Clearly, the candidates don't know how many robots are there or their locations as small mouse like animal said. They have limited time and a vast area to hunt down every last target. Some use information gathering to plan out their strategy, others use speed to remain ahead of their peers, some use brute force. Of course being calm under pressure is also important. Then there are those who use a combination of all of these tactics, they are the ones who get the top scores. The screen changed to show Izuku getting one three-pointer to launch its missile and hit and destroy another three-pointer. Izuku was in the process of taking out two three-pointers when he heard Iida's voice. Yagi, duck. Izuku immediately ducked and saw Iida jump above him and take out a two-pointer that was sneaking up behind him. Thanks. No problem. Iida duck. Now it was Iida's time to duck, then Izuku threw one of the three-pointers at four three-pointers behind Iida. Thanks. No problem. In the observation room. The perfect example is that candidate, he is making plans on the go and using his cool-headedness to implement said plans, but he won't shy away from using brute force. Vlad, what's his name by the way? Eraser had asked. The blonde candidates? Yeah. His name is Izuku Vlad stopped reading, looking surprised. Izuku Yagi this name surprised everyone, even the principal. So that's why he looked so familiar, and also the reason why his quirk felt familiar Midnight said. His quirk felt familiar. The principal raised an eyebrow. Yeah, three days ago we encountered him practicing, and the recoiling shock wave and air pressure from his punches was enough to knock us down three times in quick succession. That does sound like All Might's power. Strange, the principal thought All Might hasn't chosen a successor yet, I wish he was present here today. 
and his emerald eyes in Komidori a midnight said. Ha! That means I won the bet hand over the 5000 yen, Azawa. Yes, yes you won. But what I don't understand is why he is not taking admission through recommendations. He won't be able to, All Might already got one student in. Nezu replied. I think he wants to prove something to someone. Every teacher agreed to Midnight's statement. I guess Azawa spoke. All in all, this year's batch seemed to be promising Midnight said. That may be so, but the real test is yet to come. Let's see how they react. But Izuku. Izuku at this point had accumulated 90 points in total and was more than confident that it was enough for him to get into. Then suddenly the ground started shaking. And moments later gargantuan robots filled the battle center. So this is a zero pointer. Everyone was running away, Izuku was about to run too, but heard a cry for help. Izuku couldn't pinpoint the location of the sound, so he used eagle vision to find it. After using eagle vision he saw that a girl was trapped under some rubble and she was about to be crushed by a zero pointer. Izuku's legs moved on their own and he began running towards the zero pointer. Every teacher in the observation room was grinning at this point. Seeing this boy, son of all might and titan, Izuku Yagi, a kid they had no connection with, ran towards danger to help someone in need just like a true hero should. They couldn't expect less from him. That's right, anyone may be blessed with a powerful quirk, but only some possess the most important trait of a true hero. Nezu said. Izuku directed 60% to both of legs and jumped as high as the robot. Self-sacrifice Nezu concluded. Izuku then directed everything he had to his right arm. I don't want you to be number one, I want you to be legendary those words echoed in his mind. Solar impact. Boom. As soon as Izuku's fist hit the robot, its entire body was first pushed back, then its head came off, and finally it toppled and crashed into the ground. The recoil shock wave knocked down many of the candidates, and the air pressure had made it difficult for them to breathe for a few seconds. Izuku was happy that he saved someone, but noticed how high he was and went into panic mode. Seeing that he was falling quickly, he did the only thing he could at that time. He directed everything to his head, thus activating super time. Super time. Izuku's ability to nearly stop time when he directs 120% of his energy to head. It accelerates his brain power so much that it nearly stops time for him. Thus giving him time to think in a tight situation. However, if he keeps using it for more than 7 seconds, which is equivalent to 70 seconds, he will immediately pass out. Okay Izuku, don't panic, you're 7 stories high and rapidly falling, but you have 70 seconds to come up with a plan Izuku thought for 30 seconds before he finally got an idea. Okay all I have to do is redirect everything to the soles of my feet, and right before hitting the ground I have to move my legs, so that the air pressure would act as a cushion. I hope it works and it did work. The dust settled to reveal Izuku standing. He tried to lift both of his arms in triumph, but soon realized that that was a bad idea, as his right arm was broken. Wow did you see that? Yeah, that right there is true power. Holy shit that guy just destroyed a zero pointer. How the heck did he survive the fall? In the observation room. That was impressive. It was, he took out a zero pointer in one punch midnight said. Although, he seems to have wounded himself, Nezu commented. Recovery girl is on her way as always said. They did say that his power felt similar, but even the injuries look similar Nezu and recovery girl thought. But Izuku. People were starting to crowd him, something Izuku hated, then the crowd was broken up by recovery girl. You seem to have damaged your arm, Sunny. Come here, I'll heal you. I'm fine recovery girl, please check the girl, her leg is trapped under the rubble. But your arm? Oh, this happens every time I use my full power, but don't worry and watch this. Then Izuku's torso area began to glow and much to the surprise of the recovery girl and the other candidates, Izuku's arm began to heal. Is the exams over or do we have to do something else? Oh there's nothing more to do, you can go home now, but before you go, have some gummies. Thank you for leaving. Maybe Toshinori's son has a healing quirk, and that too a healing quirk that doesn't drain stamina recovery girl thought before tending to any injured candidate. In truth however, Izuku was very drained. He was barely conscious throughout the journey back home. As soon as he reached his house, he immediately went to the bedroom, not bothering to change or take a shower. Thank you deception class Izuku thought before falling asleep. One week later. Izuku was impatiently waiting for the phone call as he gave the address of the office, since he didn't want to give his house address. Then his phone rang. So, did I get an Izuku ask in anticipation? Yes, yes you did. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.